Hey guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon. Uh, a little bit behind today, a couple minutes, uh, we're probably about, uh, looks like we're gonna be about 20 minutes behind our scheduled launch time, uh, but we're getting things going here. Uh, we've got everything set up. Uh, we're here at the launch site, been setting up all morning. Uh, we've got everybody here. We're gonna have the balloon fill right behind us. Uh, winds are looking pretty good today. We're only at about two miles per hour on the wind speed, so that's gonna look, uh, that's gonna be awesome for wind speed. Uh, we're a little bit uh, low on our data connection here, so uh, we're not streaming on YouTube, which is unfortunate, uh, but just on Facebook today. Uh, but we'll get things get things up and running here. Count uh, Countdown's running here. We're at an uh, hour and eight minutes out, uh, so that should put our, our launch time right around uh, 12, just before 12.20. Uh, so, so we're getting everything up and running. Uh, losing my checklist in the wind. We're getting a little bit of gusts going on um, but it's nothing that's too too bad at the moment um, so we're gonna get things up and running um, we may uh, we may even get uh, try to get a little bit back on schedule here uh, if we can um, but we're gonna turn this over to Liz shortly and uh, we're gonna start the uh, balloon filling procedures here and hopefully we'll be up and running. I don't see any reason why we won't go today. Nice, beautiful, clear sky today. We should see the balloon for a real long time. Uh, so hopefully everything goes well and uh, we'll get things going. So I'm gonna get, uh, I'll give you the intro video, show you what's, what's in store for today. And then uh, we'll pass it off to Liz and she'll take you through the rest of the broadcast today. So here's, uh, here's the mission details video and uh, we'll see you in a couple minutes. Round two for 2017. Overlook Horizon 6 is launching today. <laughs> Hey guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon. It's flight day for our second flight of 2017. Overlook Horizon 6, nicknamed Shredder. The name Shredder for this flight represents today's primary objective, which is to obtain photos and video of the moment the balloon bursts at the peak of its journey. To date, all of our flights have used horizontal facing cameras on opposite sides of the payload boxes, which has captured great footage so far. However, one thing has been lacking, which is that we've never actually seen the balloon burst. The balloon burst event during the flight is typically the most violent event of the flight. When you look at our payload boxes, you'll notice that everything is secured and held down inside. Many people think it's tightly secured for landing when the box hits the ground. Sure, this is definitely a consideration, but really it's the balloon burst event that we're securing the payload for. As our weather balloon travels away from the surface of the earth, the air pressure outside the balloon decreases. This decrease in pressure means that there's less force keeping the balloon contained, and so helium inside the balloon continues to push outward, which causes the balloon to expand. The latex balloons we use for our flights are designed to stretch for just this reason, but they're also designed to break at a certain point. The higher the balloon travels, the more the balloon stretches until finally, <laughs> the balloon breaks and down it comes. When the balloon finally breaks, the gas inside will rapidly try to escape the balloon. The balloon might simply tear and let the gas out of one big gaping hole, but it's pretty common for the balloon to actually shred into many pieces. Another common result is that the balloon will be thrust violently away from the escaping gas. This can be problematic for balloon flights because if the balloon is being violently thrown, typically it will take the payload box with it. That can cause the onboard items to break, tear, be thrown around inside, or it can simply just pop the batteries loose for our radio tracker. One of the things we do to protect ourselves from this violent event is secure everything inside. But we also use a really long payload train. There's about 40 feet of string separating the balloon from the parachute, and then another 15 feet more from the parachute to the payload box. This longer train allows less force from that burst event to be translated down to the payload box. This longer train doesn't come without trade-offs though. Once the balloon does burst, we now have 40 feet of string and mangled balloon pieces hanging freely from our descending payload. It's not usually much of an issue for us, but if you followed our last flight, it was this bit of dangling material that snagged the high voltage power lines just before landing. We're already working on a cutaway system to cut this section free once the balloon bursts, so keep an eye out for that next year. Finally, this flight will be using a 1200 gram balloon, which is quite a bit larger than our previous 600 and 800 gram balloons. Normally this would mean a longer flight, but it might not today. Today's predicted landing zone has been flirting with areas heavily populated with tall trees. We're gonna do our best to stay out of some of the state forests that surround our landing area, so in order to control this, we'll be adjusting the ascent rate right up until launch time. A faster ascent rate will give us 
us a shorter flight, but that will lower our maximum achievable altitude. A slower ascent rate will give us a longer flight, and we can achieve a higher altitude since there's less helium in the balloon. Today's flight time will sit somewhere between 2 hours and 20 minutes on the low end and upwards of 3 hours on the high end. Send over those comments during the broadcast today, and Liz will let you know on the status of that ascent rate. So that's what's in store for today's flight. As the weather starts to warm up, we welcome anyone in the local Rochester, New York area to come check out one of our flights and learn about our high altitude balloon flight process. After today, we've got three more flights for 2017, so make sure you're following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date on those flights. Also, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our live broadcasts, in-flight videos, or the educational series videos we'll have in between flights. So what do you guys think about today's flight? Do you think we'll get a good shot of that balloon burst, or do you think we'll end up in a tree? Only time will tell, so let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. We'll try to answer as much as we can during the live broadcast today. For now, I'll be preparing the flight for launch very soon. So, without further delay, I'll pass it off to Liz, who'll take you through the rest of the broadcast, hopefully to a successful launch today for Overlook Horizon 6 Shredder. <laughs> Hi everybody, um, Liz here with Overlook Horizon. We're at our launch today, launch number six called Shredder. We uh, are about just over an hour away from launch time and we're getting things set up, getting ready to go. Our goals for today are getting video of the balloon shredding. So we've got a camera pointed up from the payload and hopefully getting some better pictures than we got last time because last time they were washed out a little bit and and uh sorry I'm distracted we've got some audience members here so uh so yeah so today we're getting vi video of the balloon popping which is why the name shredder and also hopefully some better videos we've got different settings on each camera one set for auto and one set for daylight so hopefully they won't be so washed out this time so us they're gonna start filling the balloon here in just a couple minutes. You can see behind me. All right, T minus 62. 62 minutes till flight. And I'm here if you have any questions. You can comment right on that video and I'll let you know what's going on, keep you updated. We've got We've got a lot of people helping here today. Just inside the door in the car. Um, I'll try to keep my radio up here so you can hear the radio chatter between these guys. But um, got our main guy in charge, Tori, who's the flight director, and Logan here, ground control. He's in charge of kind of keeping track of the countdown. And what else are you doing, Logan? Got it. That's it. Um, Step over here yeah. so they can see you. I'm uh. Here's Logan. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm keep track of countdown, reading off the times as it goes, keeping everybody on track. Yeah. Sounds good. And some other assistants from Jeff and Carrie, and uh, they are putting the gloves on to fill the balloon. I th you might remember from our previous broadcast, they have to wear the gloves when they fill the balloon so not to damage or compromise the materials. So again, we're about an hour out. If you have any questions, let me know. We'll get them answered. We're trying for this flight to get pictures of that final pop at top altitude. So. Please, so there, uh, Tori's got the balloon in his hands. I'm sorry, I can't really turn the camera. So you can see a little bit of the tarp. Tori's got the balloon in his hands. The balloon for this launch is a little bit bigger than we've used before. Um, let me see where I can find this. The bigger balloon is this 
sorry, balloon size is 1,200 grams. And it's double the size of last year's balloons, and it's bigger than the balloons that we've used this year also. They'll be using 140 cubic feet of helium. And it's gonna be, it's gonna end up being about six feet in diameter. Yes, it grows to 26 feet. I have in my notes here because the higher you get the less pressure on the balloon so it'll expand and expand as it gets higher in altitude and at top altitude it will be about 26 feet in diameter Got our climb there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're sitting at t minus 58 sorry <laughs> Okay, so again, we've got about 58 minutes. We are at the Canandaigua Academy. If anyone is local and would like to come check us out, we'll give you stickers. <laughs> so come on down. I know, I don't want to walk away. Here, go ahead, you got some? You have enough? So we do have a couple people here watching. Looks like they rode their bikes to check this out. Hopefully they'll they'll be uh, entertained and educated. So again, let me know if you have any questions. Again, they're filling up the balloon right now. They're going to use about 140 cubic feet of helium to make it about six feet in diameter. New stuff with the payload this this time around. Camera facing upwards and different settings for the for the uh, horizontal cameras as well to try to get some better quality pictures. So I think you can see they are tying a milk jug around there, and that's what they use to make sure that they have the right amount of helium. So it's filled to one and a half times the payload weight, which is, the payload weighs three and a half pounds. And... We're at T minus 56. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay, I shouldn't hold it up that high. Um, so the milk jug weighs about one and a half times the payload weight. It's a little bit heavier today because they want to have a little bit more helium so that the balloon ascends faster. The reason that they want to ascend faster today is to try to get up, um, avoid trees, avoid landing in trees because the area that their predictions show is very uh, wooded. You see, I'm gonna bring up the predictions here to show you. You can't see where my mouse is. Yeah, if it goes up faster, it'll go less, I think. I'm not sure, I'll have to ask story that. Up faster oh, it comes down. means it comes down sooner, so it will land west. So land up further. slower means it'll go up higher and land further east. Okay. okay, let's see. T minus 55. Sorry about that. Pinko, check and announce wind speed. All right, I'm trying to find the prediction map for you here. Hold on. Okay. All right, Logan, come here. Do you see? Do you see the mouse? The speed is currently 3.8 miles per hour. <laughs> the mouse. No. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, it's way down here. Oh. 
Oh, there we go. All right. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to show you guys the prediction map. Again, balloon filling procedures. Opening the tank. Okay, so there it goes, starting the helium into the balloon. Um, what you're seeing right now is the 2D prediction map. And that shows... But I was balloon attached parachute. That shows uh, where we're starting, which is Canandaigua Academy. And it shows where the balloon uh. is traveling. So it's going to travel. The line for the balloon is attached to the parachute. The line is not attached to it's going to travel to the east. Um, if you see over, uh, I can't quite see what the town name is, but there's a little burst. That's where the balloon's predicted to burst. And then it'll descend from there, and it's going to land, I think, around Cortland. The flight time should be about two hours and 20 minutes. Which means it'll be in ascent for an hour and 45 minutes, and then it'll be in descent for about 37 minutes. That's what the prediction shows. Uh, can you see the green eyes out of this uh, bag here? So I'll show you a different prediction map also. So this is the 2D prediction map, which shows you how far it's going to travel. This next one is the 3D prediction map. So it's going to show you how far it'll travel east and also how high it will travel. The prediction maps that I'm showing you are not exactly the same. They don't show exactly the same predictions. One shows a little bit farther to the east and one shows a little bit further west. And so we're expecting it to land somewhere in the middle of those. They're not too far off of each other though, both around Cortland. So if you can see in this one, where we start in Canandaigua, it kind of travels west just a little tiny bit, and then it goes east. Uh, T-minus 52. 52 minutes left. So you can see the ascent there, and then the descent and the landing. So hopefully, we're hoping to avoid some of the forest area. There's a lot of state forests apparently near where we're going to land. We're going to avoid trees and power lines like last time. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Right, I'm going to switch back over here so you can see behind me the balloon is getting filled. Again, they're going to go to about 6 feet in diameter. 140 cubic of helium. This is a bigger balloon than we normally use. And they're going to fill it a little bit. They're going to fill it a little bit more than what's necessary to lift the payload so that they get a faster ascent. And again, they're doing that to try to avoid landing in some of that wooded area. So there's the balloon. That's just uh, the edge of the tent there that you're seeing up at the top of the screen. There's Carrie holding the balloon. They're just double checking the uh, the line on that weighted milk jug, not weighted, filled, I guess, to make sure that it's properly on there. Oh, sorry. T minus 50 minutes. 50 minutes till launch time, 5 0. Again, if you're in the area, I would like to stop by. We'll answer any questions you have. We've got stickers for you. <clears throat> so it looks like they're getting some lift 
from the balloon that the milk jug is coming up. They are So they're using an anemometer. You can see kind of right behind me, this way, um, to measure the wind speed. And they're checking it right now. The winds. Wind speed is currently two point six. Wind speed is currently two point six. Next thing is. So I believe what they're waiting. Next step to six, no, seven point eight. They're waiting to move the balloon or, or tie it up until the wind dies down a little bit so that it doesn't bounce around and hit equipment or, or anything like that. Doesn't seem to be pulling down on it anymore. It's just me pulling down on it now. Again, any questions you have, let me know. I'll be happy to answer them about the flight, about the payload, about the balloon, about any preparations or anything like that. Um, so if you can see that um, milk jug that's filled to the, the payload weight, one and a half times the payload weight. It's kind of bouncing okay, around a little bit. The dusting has picked up a bit. They want to make sure that it's actually going to Copy. What are we gonna lift it and not bounce it around or it's not going to come back down. Wind speed is currently bouncing between 4.9 and 7.8. So the wind speed is between 4.9 and 7.8, she just said. They just want to make sure that it's going to lift it appropriately. So if you remember last... Uh, All right, balloon's filled. GC, moving on to the next. Balloon is full. So they're going to tie it up. They use um, zip ties to secure the balloon so that they don't lose the helium. Balloon's filled. Let's move to the next item. Fido, anchor the balloon. So they're going to anchor the balloon. They're going to tie it up with zip ties. They're going to make sure that it's anchored so we don't fly away. Auto attach balloon line to parachute. So they... Uh, Roger that in process. Next step is to attach the parachute. So. The payload, or the full balloon, looks like the balloon at the top, and then the string, and then the parachute, and then the string, and then the payload. So what they're going to do now is attach the parachute the appropriate distance from the balloon, which I believe is 40 feet. Just want to make sure. And if any of you watched our previous lunches, the last time the string from the balloon to the parachute is what caught on the power lines. So that's something that we're concerned about today, more about landing in trees than landing in power lines. So.
Again, any questions, let me know. Come on down, let me know. We've got stickers and business cards for you. Also remember, you can buy Overlook Horizon t-shirts, which are pretty cool. It looks like we might have some more people coming to watch. I'm not sure there's another event going on at the school here today, so hard to tell who's going where. They need a zip tie again. They use zip ties to tie up the balloon. Well, oh, another new thing for today I forgot to mention they're using a different type of string for the payload. Usually, they use um, like a heavier duty cord, but today they are using kite string. So that should be lighter weight, but still just as uh, durable or... If you can hear that um, kind of crackly, staticky noise in the background, that's uh, making sure that we're getting radio signals from the tracking devices, I believe. So again, this is our sixth launch, nicknamed Shredder, because we're trying to get video of the balloon popping. Usually the balloon, when it pops, shreds to a million pieces, hence the name Shredder. Um, Tori had to figure out how to put the um, upward facing camera into the payload. He wasn't sure whether to mount it on top of the box or inside the box. Um, at those high altitudes, the temperatures get down to, I think he said negative 50. So he wasn't sure that the camera would work if it were outside the box at that temperature. They ended up um, putting it inside the box. They kind of carved out a little spot for it inside the box and it's attached to the lid. So let's see, we've got three cameras like I said, two facing horizontally, one facing upwards to hopefully get that nice shredding footage. Got it. Excuse me, taking a picture. Oh. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, I got it. <laughs> All right. Okay, I see. Uh, Randy, you want a t-shirt? The link to get the t-shirts is definitely on our Facebook page or on the website. So go check that out. And John, how you doing? Oh no. There's a hole in the balloon. So what I was going to say is they wear the gloves so that they don't compromise the balloon. Because the um, oils from your skin and things can damage the material. Looks like the balloon might be already damaged. I don't think it's anything that we've done here today. So I think we're going to have to come up with a plan. See, hey, what's our count at? Are you getting out? 40. T minus 40. Uh, let's hold the count, please. Holding count. We're going to hold the count here at 40 minutes so we can figure out what to do with the hole in the balloon. Is this like a whole hole or is it just like a almost hole? Uh, we got a small hole, which will turn into a large hole when this balloon stretches. Trying to, de yeah, trying to determine what we're going to do. So, um, 
you heard us talking about it before, they fill the balloon and it gets about six feet in diameter. But as it ascends, there's less pressure on the balloon and so it'll expand bigger and bigger. They were expecting it to get to about 26 feet in diameter at its peak altitude. However, if there's a hole, which there is, it won't stretch that far. It won't ascend that high. It's totally unpredictable how high it would get or how far it would go. So we have to figure out from here what to do and so that they're figuring out now what to do. Trying to discuss that the um, balloon, the hole in the balloon will get bigger as the balloon stretches, obviously. And just trying to decide if they patch it or if it's just going to leak or things like that. So. So we'll see what they decide. I I don't believe they have a backup balloon today. So they're talking about whether something happened here while they were filling it or if it's just a defect in the balloon. And I think the consensus is it's a, it's a defect in the balloon. Um, it's a small hole and it's just too unpredictable to move forward right now. So we're paused. We stopped the countdown at 40 minutes. And we're going to see what happens from here. Let's see if you can see. You can, I mean, you can't see the, uh, the hole from here, but. So what they're discussing now, apparently there is a backup balloon, but they've used so much helium, they weren't sure if they had enough to fill a second balloon. So now they're trying to figure out if they can get the helium from the current balloon somehow into the second balloon without wasting too much of it. This is like real Apollo 13 style problem solving. How to fit a square peg in a round hole. You coming over here? Yeah. All right. Your story. Tell us what's happening. All right. I need to plug in here. Oh, here. All right, am I on? Yeah, looks like we're good. Okay, so apologies for the hold here. Um, so we've got the balloon filled. And we started hearing some whistling coming out of it. Uh, so we got a small hole in the balloon. It looks like a manufacturing defect. Um, there's kind of like a watermark around the outside of that, that hole as well. It's a really small hole and there's not very much, um, there's not very much helium coming out of it right now, which seems like it would be fine, but we're, we're worried about when the balloon actually gets up to the top of the atmosphere, that it may expand that hole, let more helium out, and then we may get a really long float time and we may be picking this up in Pennsylvania. There's no way to really tell, like it could be fine and it might stretch and just go up and be perfectly normal, but uh, we're not gonna risk it. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna hold the count here for a little while, uh, probably gonna have to uh, back up, a little while. we'll probably just hold the count um, because we're going to uh, we're going to run some new predictions. We have a backup balloon. It is smaller, unfortunately. Uh, it's the same size as our last flight. It's an 800 gram balloon. Um, so we're going to run some new predictions here, real quick, to figure out where that um, 
where that new flight is going to go, and then we'll still we should still be able to launch. We got a really big helium tank, so there should be a lot of helium left. We're even going to we're going to try to salvage some of the helium from the the balloon that we have. It probably like, I don't know how well that's going to go, but we're going to try to get some of it, um, and then we'll fill the balloon up the rest of the way with what's left in the tank. So we should be okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, what software are you using for broadcast? Uh, Wirecast. We use Wirecast for broadcasting. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's uh, that's what's going on right now. That's really uh, frustrating. Um, but hopefully, this is uh, you know the, just a minor issue. We'll get a new balloon filled, and we'll we'll get on our way. Um, so we're gonna run. Uh, I'm gonna go run those predictions here now, and uh, we'll see if we can update where this uh, where this balloon is gonna travel to. Um, and see. Well, actually, here we. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I can do it at the same time on this computer. So I'm gonna have to use the other computer here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give this back over. Give this back over to Liz here. And. Uh, then I'm going to go run some predictions. All right, so here's what we uh, just talked about here. Um, we're going to. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put this. Uh, well, we're probably gonna put this on pause a little bit. Um, I'm gonna put up a little uh, bumper video here. Um, it probably it's probably gonna be about uh, 10 minutes or so. We'll leave the camera up so you can see what's happening. Um, but I'm gonna need. We're gonna need some assistance with this, so I'm gonna take Liz away from the broadcast for a minute. Um, so you're welcome to keep watching. Um, if you want to take a break, we can call this intermission here. Um, so if you got to take a break, um, we can do that as well. Um, so I would guess that it's probably going to be about a 10 minute hold, um, at least, if not, probably 10 or 15 minutes while we get new predictions, um, get this balloon deflated, and then switch over to the backup balloon. Um, so, so give us about... Uh, 10 or 15 minutes here. I'm going to put up the uh, the bumper video. There's, you'll still see the camera, so you can see what's going on. And uh, uh, you know, let us know if you got any questions. Let us know. But this is a good uh, this is um, this is a good time to take, get your get your snacks, get your drinks, go to the lobby, popcorn. get some popcorn, and uh, we'll uh, we'll pick it up here in a second.
All right, hey guys. Whoa, oh, can't see me. Hello, there we go. All right, so we got the other balloon deflated, uh, ran some new predictions. Good news is our landing site should be pretty much the same area as where we were before. Not gonna get as high of an altitude. Um, it's gonna go up slower actually, because we're gonna use the same, same amount of lift uh, to try to get a little more altitude um, and also get that same landing area. So we got uh, everything uh, back to connected and we're about to start filling the new balloon. We reset the count to 55, which is about what our where our time frame should be to get this filled, secured, get the payload ready, and get things up and running here. So I'm gonna start this uh, uh, start this timer and I'll pass it off to Liz here. All right, back at it. Here's my walkie-talkie, okay. So what they've decided to do is sort of abandon the first All right, we're under T minus 55. We're gonna start the filling here. <laughs> they've abandoned the first balloon, which had the little tiny pinprick hole. And they tried to salvage some of the helium in it, but it was kind of a lost cause because to get the helium, they had a valve and they were trying to get, to attach both balloons to the valve and squeeze the, the full balloon and get it into the empty balloon, but it just wasn't working when they weren't getting anywhere. So, based on what they had left, what they think they had left in the helium tank, they think that there's enough to fill it up. So, hopefully, we will get this all figured out. Tori ran some new predictions. So, Tori ran some new predictions based on the new balloon size and did some new calculations, figured out how how much helium we need, because, I hope you can hear me, it's really loud here. Um, because this is a smaller balloon, the backup balloon is smaller, it needs less helium to get the same ascent rate, so they're hoping that there's, there's still plenty of helium in the tank to fill, and there it goes. So it looks like it's lifting. So the balloon is lifting. It's not lifting the uh, weight yet. The, I think in the rate of speed that is going in, you might want to turn that down. The milk jug. So we talked about that with the last filling. The milk jug is one and a half times the payload. And they're using oh, that. T minus 52. They're using that to fill the, to test the um, lift that the balloon gets. Again, I'm hoping you can hear me. The helium tank is very loud. So Tori just said the helium tank is starting to get low. And it looks like they're uh, so the tank is low, but they're getting some lift. So hopefully it's enough. Balloon is full. They're securing it. They've gotten the appropriate lift. Current wind speed is 2.4 with gusts up to 4.0 miles per hour. Copy. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we are here at Canandaigua Academy prepping for the launch of our sixth balloon called Shredder. The goal of this flight is to get pictures of the balloon popping in near space. Um, in a few minutes, I will talk to Tori about some of the 
new predictions that he has. Because before we had a bigger balloon that was um, inflated to about six feet in diameter and it would have burst at about 26 feet in diameter. But this balloon is smaller. Um, so I'm not sure how big this one will finally get to and what kind of burst we'll see from it. That seemed, to attach balloon line to parachute. That seemed like a pretty quick fill. Roger so that attached. Hopefully we'll get get things back together here. Okay. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. Right now they're tying up a balloon. See, we need uh, two zip ties to fight on. Using zip ties to secure it to the lines and to secure it so they don't lose any helium. Which is pretty important because the tank is pretty much empty. Again, if you're just tuning in, we have had a delay in our launch time because the first balloon had a tiny hole in it which we believe was a manufacturing defect. FAO, prepare for a picture of team with balloon. Got it. I got it, Carrie, if you... Oh, yeah. I got it. So they're finishing up the fill. Okay, I'm taking over that duty at this point. <laughs> I'm, I'm PAO, she's FAO. So again, in just a few minutes, I'll um, ask Tori what his new predictions are. I don't know if because we're using a smaller balloon, if it means they expect the landing to change too much, or um, the peak altitude, I'm not sure. So as soon as he's got a second here, we'll ask him what's up with that. Let me know your questions. Uh, somebody asked earlier about the gloves that they wear. Those are to make sure that the oils from their hands don't get on the balloon, which can compromise the material. Right, well, it's filled. Looks secure. Uh, oh. Fido, why don't you hold this uh, black edge here? I would, I'm not sure I trust that string, so I'm gonna keep it there while we do the rest of the, uh, the procedure. Uh, flight anchor the balloon. Copy, the balloon's anchored. Balloon is anchored to <laughs> <laughs> So now they're going to attach the balloon attack. to the parachute, I believe. What's our clock at? 40, you're at T minus 47, 46. I did. I took some. Okay, ready? One, two, three. All right. Oh. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. Okay, so. Give me the rest after that. What is the payload? The payload is. Um, <coughs> Uh, PAO, can you reset the, the clock to T minus three zero? Yes. One second, I'll answer your question about the payload. I'm resetting the clock here. Yes. TC, give me the next uh, first item on the T minus what? thirty. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Inco, check it out. Wind speed. T minus thirty. 
Sorry. Copy. Thank you. Okay. So what is the payload? The payload. I'm. Um, see next after the wind speed. Is. Uh, rest of team, pack model central gear for chase. Copy, let's get the next one. The wind speed is currently... I'm sorry, I'm getting interrupted. The payload is a styrofoam box and inside it there MAO, are... MAO, prepare binoculars. Electronics Copy. that will measure the Standby. altitude, the um, exterior temperature, the interior temperature. There are cameras, there are GPS trackers, uh, there is uh, a backup tracker system to help find uh, the payload later. Um, so this, I'm, I, it must still be in the car. Copy and, uh, my cameras are not mobile currently. Or else it would payload show you what verify it like. and insert payload antenna. So they're getting a payload together right now. Um, so one of the purposes of this launch and a new thing in the payload is an upward facing camera to try to get pictures of the balloon shredding. Shredding. So hopefully that is what we'll see when we retrieve the box where it lands. Um loaded. Hello, turn GPS phone on. Uh before you tape up the payload box, can you come show it to the camera real quick because I can't come over there. Uh, yes, copy. Maybe, um, can you cut me a piece of Velcro? Mr. Tori's going to come over and uh, show the payload box to you so you can see what it looks like. Um, like I said, inside you'll see all the electronics tracking devices, uh, temperature sensors, radio transmitters. Uh, I'm sure that he'll, too. yeah. We have pictures of it, we'll show you. Um, my mobile ca cameras are currently not working or else I would walk over there and show it to you. But I think he's gonna come just do a quick overview of what's in there. I know he doesn't really wanna uh, mess with our timeline, but. Okay, I'll cut to appropriate set. Somebody asked what the payload is, so. All right, here's our payload. I don't know if you can hear me through this mic. Uh, looks like the top of the box, this is our balloon facing camera here. Hold that for yep. me. Inside of the box here, I'll tip the camera down. Yeah, they probably will. <laughs> Here's the inside of the box. Two, cam two horizontal cameras inside, batteries, Arduino tracker. GPS. All right, so that's our payload. He's going to go bring it over to show it to uh, the people that have come to watch. Uh, we have a, a couple people that um, rode their bikes up here, brought lunch it looks like, and made a day of it. So we made sure to give them stickers, and if you come, you'll get one too. Oh, very cool. Kevin Reeve launching a similar payload, similar balloon. We would love to uh, see where you guys go and what happens to yours. And we'll keep you updated on ours. And Brian, where's the audio? I'm sorry. I have the microphone on and Tori was trying to talk, so apologies if you did not hear everything he was saying. Uh, he said... Arduino tracking system, there's radio trackers, there's um, temperature sensors in there, there's backup trackers. So um, again, we'll have still pictures of the payload and can label those for you so you can come back and look at those at another time. So they're finishing up tying the balloon. I don't know if you can see over here, hopefully. And uh, the balloon, uh, is the balloon currently tied to the parachute? So the balloon is tied to the parachute. So the next- yes, the whole train is connected except for the payload. 
All right, so last thing they have to do, I believe, is turn everything on in the payload and then tie it up and away it goes. We are at T minus 24. T minus 24. <laughs> And uh, so hopefully yeah, we'll. They're not mine. They're Tori's. He brought them for everybody. <laughs> Sorry, donuts. Uh, I was buying this lunch. <laughs> Flight is just showing some of the spectators what's in the box. Yes. So. As soon as he's got that all powered up, KGC backup GPS powered on. Um, I got a question here about your APRS call sign to track your package. It's uh, it's on. It's at the top of the. Uh, um, the checklist. Okay. Yep. KD two KPZ, and then there's a dash one one after it. So it's Kilo Delta Zulu, uh, or no, Kilo Delta two Kilo Papa Zulu dash one one. Thank you for that. Okay, hey, so um, this is for Kevin who asked for the uh, call sign. Twenty three. In case you didn't hear what Tori said over the radio, the call sign is K D two. KPZ dash one one. Let's say that one more time in case you didn't hear me. K D two K P Z then dash one one. So that's the APRS call sign if you want to track it. PAO here, what do you need? If that count gets to T minus twenty, can you hold it? Yes, you're at 22 right now. So, <coughs> sorry, I thought the phone was ringing again, but it was just the, the video feed. Um, so there's... So they're just, uh, Tori's closing up the payload. <laughs> 29,000 meters. Logan's on it. <laughs> so the prediction is that this balloon's going to go to 95,000 feet. Uh, turn down brightness. So, uh,. This balloon is predicted to go to 95,000 feet. Copy. Wi-Fi off. Copy. Wi-Fi off. Attached to capsule. Um, if you can hear what's happening on the radio. Attached um, to capsule. Tori and Logan. Flight the chase phone and GPS logging on. Are going through the checklist of how to turn on the payload and what needs to be done. So you can just listen a little Stand bit to that. I don't have any transmission. No, it's off right now. Okay. okay, so we are just waiting for the package to be ready. I believe. Okay, oh, confirm that we held at T minus 20. Oh. <laughs> yes, we are holding at exactly T minus 20. Good job. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Plus, you 
explained it that way. Yeah. Uh, GC, Chase phone is on. Verify GPS. We're getting very close. We're holding it. T minus 20. Um, I... I'm not quite sure. I think it's Flight just... verify post launch checklist items and camera duties. <laughs> Fido, I think the only thing we have post launch is just make sure we get the exact launch time. Roger that. We'll do. Okay, launch controllers, this is first poll for readiness. Fido. Fido, green, ready to go. F A O. FAO, ready to go. PAO. Go for launch, PAO. GC, get launch control is ready. <laughs> so we're about 20 minutes out, I think, if not less. I still don't have transmission. Count resumed, T minus 20. GPS acquisition. Uh, okay. It's prepared, just not powered on yet. Can I power this on? I just gotta plug it in. Uh, the remote has to be powered on first. And then set it, set it down so in the open field before you plug in the battery. Since we're getting close, I will show you the... Copy that. ...prediction map. I'm not sure if the prediction will be exactly the same, um, but this is where Your the... alarm plugs into the uh, white JS2 connector, right? Yeah, that's the last thing to go because the battery door has to be shut. This was the prediction for the bigger balloon, so I'm not sure if it's exactly going to land the same. Um, but it should be approximately the same because of the... I don't have to do anything with the controller, just leave the powered on red light. A powered on red light, both metal switches up. Okay, so there's the prediction again. Here's the a different prediction for you. 3D. Again, this is probably going to be slightly different because of the different size balloon. Um, this one's uh, pretty. Fido, does it matter which way this uh, connector This smaller balloon's only going to go approximately to 95,000, which is not the highest that we've ever been. Uh, Copy that. GC, the quad cop is powered on. We've gotten to 102. Payload, our battery power. Battery power. We'll go back Good to the tone. main cam Good here. Good GPS. Stand by. <laughs> so, uh, some of our fans here getting to test out the balloon. Let's see how it feels. So they're just kind of testing to feel how how much lift it is and what it feels like. Standing by for GPS signal acquisition. GPS acquired. Inco verify signal. So you can see in the camera, the balloon, the, there's a radar reflector, there's a parachute, and now they're... T minus 16. They are getting ready to attach the payload. Let's turn on. Transmission verified. Vaughn. You need a battery read. You go to flight. You need a battery read. Uh, sure. 
Battery is at 9.41 volts. We're getting close. We're about 16 minutes out. Tori's got two power on the cameras. Our transmissions were successful. Again, we are goals for this mission are to avoid trees and get video of the balloon shredding. Also get better quality pictures of from the horizontal cameras. Yeah. It's kind of warm out here in the sun. Yeah, definitely nicer than last time. Somebody <laughs> here is gonna get sunburned. <laughs> One out of the five of us <laughs> has got to get one. Cameras are on. Cameras are on. Inco, ver verify signal reception. So, uh... Stand by. Verified. We're verifying the reception. Payload, okay, we're at T minus 14. Uh, secure module hatch with packing tape. Yeah, we're a little ahead. For 14 minutes, they're taping up the box. The box is labeled with information. In case somebody else finds it, they can get it back to us. So again, we are expecting a flight of about a little less than two and a half hours, landing somewhere near Portland. Things could possibly have changed because of our balloon dilemma. Portland? Cortland, I said. Oh, you said Portland. <laughs> yep. Wow. Yep. Payload box is closed. All right, we're sitting at a T minus 13. Payload and Fido, attach module to harness primary line. So they have, <coughs> the strings are already attached to the box, and they just have little loops that they put kind of around a carabiner to make it all go around the top. It should be uh, any second now. <laughs> I'm not being very good on my uh, pictures and videos. Yeah, <laughs> lots to do. Good to go. Coming fast, we got it. Sequence 13. Okay, if you're still watching, we got about a little under 12 uh, minutes. Uh, sorry, 18 uh, set. Excuse me, 8 satellites. Alright, um, let's see. Let's take this off. Sorry, 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 people. I'm trying to get it so that uh, you can see what's happening here better. So that's the payload box. 
they are attaching it to the balloon. He's waiting to hear the transmission sounds. Sounds like static to everybody else, but to him. tell him that. He looks like there's something going on over there. He's waiting for it to transmit again. Would you reset the transmitter? I'm on purpose. I reset the sequence count. Copy that. We're currently at sequence one with nine satellites. The three balloon again. At T minus ten. Back at sequence zero flight. We, we might have to hold here for a minute. Not really sure what's happening, but the transmission keeps restarting. PAO, could you hold with when we get to T minus five? Yes, hold at T minus five. Check. So something, the transmitter I think keeps restarting. Um, this is not what we want. We want consistent transmissions so that we can track it appropriately. Well, fine, so we taped it. <laughs> so hoping, I think that three it's beeps and then that, yeah. Out. So by the tones that it's making, he knows what's happening and, and uh. All right, we gotta open the payload back up. He's reopening the payload. Uh, what time on the count? Uh, what's before T minus five? Uh, we got T minus ten as the securing of the module. Yeah, I think we can just hold it high. So we're still at eight minutes. So if they get this figured out, we might not have to hold it all. But. Um, we shall see. He's got to open the box after pack, putting all the packing tape on and all that stuff, so. I'm going to stand over here for a second. is reopening the payload box to see what what happened why it keeps restarting hopefully this is a quick fix Carries the FAO today. <laughs> All we see is Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> I was standing right there, but I figured I was just. You can only see it like a corner of my head, and whatever. Just need a minute in the shade. Uh, replace the antenna with spare. 
Yeah. So he replaced the antenna. <clears throat> We're gonna see if that's the, the issue. And hopefully this will solve the problem. What's our sequence? Currently at sequence eight. Sounds like we're getting transmissions. I don't want to jinx anything though. Flight, we're at sequence <coughs> nine with ten satellites. Your battery power is nine point two nine volts. Flight, we're at five minutes. You still want to hold? Uh, yeah, hold at five, just for a brief hold. Holding at five. Okay, so we're at five minutes holding. Hopefully everything will come together and we'll be launching here in just over five minutes. We switched out the antenna to a spare, which seems Nico, when are we at sequence -wise? to have worked. Sequence 12. Let me know when we get sequence 17. Copy that. Still hold? Still hold. So again, we're at just under five minutes here, but probably take us just over five minutes. We're holding, just to make sure we're getting enough transmissions consistent. through the checklist to make sure we've, everything's done appropriately and we're at T minus four and a half minutes to launch. You see the team pulling the controllers. Inco. Go for launch. PAO. Go for launch. Payload. Payload go. Fido. Fido go. Flight. Flight, go for launch. LD, we're go for launch. Copy. We're getting ready to launch. We've got three and a half minutes. 
Uh, we're taking the safety line off, the safety weight. They are getting a quadcopter ready. Can you make sure you get a good hold of that in case they let go. They're getting a, on the quadcopter ready so that uh, they can take some pictures of the launch from the air as well as from the ground. Minus three. Getting the cameras ready. So we've got Jeff running the Please quadcopter. Zero miles per hour. Tori is um, extending the balloon, not launching it yet, but the balloon's going up. And Logan's holding on to the payload so we don't lose that yet. I'm going to try to get this uh, camera down so you can see where the balloon is. Please excuse my shaky hand. Inko, what's our uh, sequence? Okay, so there's... You just gave me sequence 23. Look guys, the payload. You look up. Mm, I'm trying to follow. Quadcopter is in the air. T minus one minute and 45 seconds. There it is. There's the balloon. PAO, switch to launch camps. Okay. I'm on prep cams, but uh, you you can skip the launch cam switch and just do what you were doing. Hold the okay. Hold the camera. All right, so I'm just gonna hold it for you guys, so you can uh, see you. Whoa. T minus one minute twenty seconds. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. So there's Tori with the payload. You look a little bubbly. Give me every sequence number from here on out. That's the um, radar detector. Copy that. T minus 60 seconds. Parachute. There's the balloon way up there somewhere. Sun, sorry. The balloon is like right. Sequence. 26. Sequence number 26. Sequence number 26. T minus 40 seconds. Okay, we're getting close. Fido, this flight should go uh, with our wind slightly towards those power lines there. Uh oh. Power lines Roger is that. a bad word around here. T minus 20. Sequence 27. So we're getting ready to go. This 15. Looks pretty good. The balloon is pretty much straight up. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Three, two, one, launch. Somebody check the clock, verify launch time. Yep. Launch at 1254.31. Uh, I'm hoping that you guys can... I don't know if you can see this or not. Think I'll verify signal. Oh, there it is. Stand by, just waiting for the next transmission. So that white bat that you see up there is the balloon. There it goes. And uh, if you can see just to the... I don't know, like... Got a read of sequence 27. The the uh, quadcopter is up there as well, next to the balloon. And there it goes. Expecting the next sequence read momentarily. And uh, Tori will be back to discuss a little bit about the launch and how it went before they get on their way, I believe. 
a nice clear day, so you should be able to see it for a while. I don't know if you guys can see it anymore. Oh, there it is. A little tiny like that. Successful launch. Initial launch time was 12.54, so we're about a minute out. You can see that quadcopter flew right by it. What's falling? Tori, is that that's, No, that's oh. a quadcopter. <laughs> oh, exactly. <like>, what's falling? <laughs> Alright, I don't think you can see this anymore, so I'm going to pull back in here. Launch controllers received first signal, 3,100 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, feet. 3,100 feet already at the first signal back. So that's pretty hey, exciting. I did not hit sequence 28. Maybe out of range of that small antenna. Copy that. I am getting signal on the public network. So signals are being received. Oh. Uh, the first and most recent one we've received was about 3,000 feet. Here comes the quadcopter back. Our land. Hopefully, they got some good pictures. Again, we're expecting this flight to take about almost two and a half hours. Land somewhere around Cortland, New York. Um, give an update over here? Okay, so one second, Tori's going to give an update on all kinds of stuff. Lots of questions I know people have. Um, make sure. Okay, thanks for the, for those who watched. Um, we'll keep you updated. I'm not signing off yet, but we will be keeping you updated throughout the day with other live broadcasts. Twelve fifty-four. Um, you've got one fan on here, Kevin, who's launching his own balloon a little bit later today. Oh, that's awesome! So, where from? It's hard to see on there. But here you go. All right, we're switching over. Here's Tori. All right, hey guys. Uh, hopefully you can hear me all right. Uh, we're gonna get rid of this. Uh, get rid of this timer here. Uh, we're good to go. Let me see if I can throw the map up on the screen here. Uh, looks like we were getting good signals. Uh, good signals here. So let's see if we can get a. Uh, see if I can get the live map here. I think this is it. Let's see if that works here. There we go. So that's our that's our live map. We are up and running. It took a while to show up on APRS, uh, so it got a little bit nerve-wracking there for a minute. Uh, but it does look like we are receiving good signals all around, and everything looks to be good and. In process, 7,600 feet. We got clear skies here, beautiful day. We can still see the balloon. I probably can't show it to you because it's so tiny, like I can barely see it, but uh, we can still see it. It's still up there. Uh, I'm gonna get my drink here because I'm dying. Always gets nerve wracking when you let go of that balloon. You don't know if it's gonna work. So we let go of the balloon and our antenna, we got two antennas. We were using the small antenna. I forgot to switch to the big antenna. But this, so it went up, the small antenna here on the ground wasn't receiving it anymore. So got a little bit nerve wracking for a minute. 
um, but it did show up on APRS about 3,000 feet. We're launching from about just under 900 feet, so it took uh, almost 2,000 feet before it showed up on APRS. Um, but it is showing up now. Looks like we're getting very good signal. We're even receiving it here now that we switched to the bigger antenna that we've got. Um, we're going to start packing up and uh, see if we can track this flight the rest of the way. Uh, so, yeah, if you, uh, if you want to track it here, uh, let's see if we can get... Uh, you can go to overlookhorizon.com slash map is uh, where you can get the uh, tracking information from. And I'm gonna put that up on the screen here. Let me see if I can just uh, type something up here real quick. Uh, track live URL. We'll put that in the shot. And we'll put that here. And we'll move this here. We'll go like that, and there we go. We'll put it on the screen there. So you can see the, uh, the URL where you can track this live. So it's overlookhorizon.com or olhcn.com, either one works slash map. That'll take you right to this tracking map that we're viewing here now. Um, and so we're, we're looking good. Now we gotta go chase it down, pack everything up. Uh, so it, it should head to the west just briefly. And then it's gonna make a turn back and head southeast from here. Um, so I we are- see it quite well. Sorry. We okay. are up and running. Yeah, it's, I lost it. I don't know where it, oh, there it is. I can see it, yep. Still see it. Uh, Do you have so, that tracking map up on here yet or no? Yep, this is what they're looking at here now. So that's what we're looking at. Uh, I'm going to leave the map up here uh, for a little while. Um, let's see. Oh, I forgot to look, see if anybody's got questions. Um, let, me, let me pull up the uh, broadcast again. Uh, let's light this candle. Yeah, I like that thing. Good luck. Awesome job on the launch. You may have it all down. Love the live. You have it all down. <laughs> That's generous, but I don't know if about that. <laughs> Love the live broadcast. Good luck on the chase and recovery. Well, thanks, Kevin. Really appreciate that. I don't know if we have it, uh, if we have it all down, but we had a couple of hiccups today. Mostly, the big hiccup was just the, the fact that the first balloon had a hole in it, which really disappointing. It's a Kmont balloon, Tokatex balloon. We never had that problem before, but small hole in it, so we're gonna send it back and get our, get some money back and get another balloon, and we'll use the bigger balloon on the next launch. So. We'll try that. Um, so it is up and running here. I can barely see this fall. You know what I could do? Instead of looking at that, let me look at... Uh, looks like it's making a turn back to the southeast now, so that's good. So the balloon's traveling southeast. Uh, just made that hook around, so it's actually it actually should pretty much fly back over us. I don't know if we can still see it up there. Um... Uh, let's see. Uh, let me see if I can get to the launch here and look up some comments because uh, I haven't seen any of the comments. I've just pe been hearing about them from Liz. Uh, so let me get this broadcast up here. So we are we are up and running. The thing is in the air. It's tracking. Uh, let's see. Randy Griffiths, nice job. Thanks. Appreciate it, Randy. Uh, wish it was a little bit smoother than uh, than we had, but we're happy that it's. Uh, we're happy that it's up in the air now finally after a delay that's almost uh, looks like an hour delay about so we had an hour delay and again if you if you didn't follow along with the whole with the whole thing that was uh, really due to the fact that uh, the first balloon that we tried to use had a hole in it manufacturer's defect hole not something that we put in there you can see there's like a little watermark in there right dead center little hole so super unfortunate we were hoping to use the big balloon today but we had to switch back to an 800 gram balloon so now we're using an 800 gram balloon instead um, so that should be uh, uh, you know should still be still be good um, let's see let's light this candle yeah I like that one Brian I was, I was trying real hard uh, good luck thanks again Brian audio problem I all right, no problem um, let's see I can't see other comments here in the past. I don't know if I can pull them up on the computer here. I was just trying to look back, uh, look back and see some of the comments from earlier, um, and see if uh, see if there was anything that I could respond to or see what everybody was saying uh, before we really kick this off and end it, because um, we're just we're getting ready to to end this thing. So while we're talking about ending it. Um, 
we will do at least two more broadcasts today. So we'll have a status broadcast that happens. Uh, it'll be on Facebook only. Uh, status broadcast will happen about halfway through the flight. We're probably going to try to do that once it gets right about to alti uh, burst altitude. Um, so check for that. That will be in a, probably about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. So right around 2.30, 2.45. Um, keep an eye out for that. And then we'll do another broadcast at the end for recovery when we finally get it. Um, so keep an eye out for those two broadcasts coming today. The, the last, so we should have another one, 1.30, 1.45. And then the last one should be, uh, let's see, we launched at 1. So that should be around uh, 3.30 or 4, somewhere in that range. Um, we'll be doing the next next two broadcasts. So, um, so yeah. Apologies for uh, for the long delay there, the one hour delay. Um, you know that was that was a pain. Uh, but here we go. I got all my comments up. Let me see. Oh no, it's not going to let me look at all the comments from previously. Oh wait, I was trying to do that on on the computer. Let me do that real quick. I'm going to pull up the. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, where is my live broadcast? Let me see if I can uh, see if I can look at some of these comments here. Let's see. Sorry, I'm just looking at there. See Jenna Watch and Marie Trip. We thought we thought Marie Trip was going to come to launch today. I thought thought for sure you'd be here today. Um, Randy, I want a t-shirt. Oh, awesome. Overlookhorizon.com slash shirts. We got a couple different designs there. Uh, all the proceeds go right to our balloon flights and help uh, help fund those. Um, so help uh, keep us flying, trying new things. Hopefully we can get that bigger balloon and uh, try again uh, another flight. Um, do the gloves serve a purpose? I'm sure that already got answered. But yes, we do use the gloves to keep the oils from our hands off the balloon. Let's see what else we got. Um, very cool. We're launching a similar balloon in a few hours. Um, yeah, Kevin, I don't know if Kevin's still here, but Kevin, if you're still here, where are you launching that uh, that other balloon? Uh, be interested to know. And let us know the call sign. We'll follow it along while we're watching our flight. Um, so, uh, let's see. Yeah, so I don't, I don't see any more uh, comments coming in here. Um, I don't know if that's a. Oh yeah, we got a plane. We got a plane coming by. We did. We do file with the FAA. I can't see the balloon, but. Yeah, hold on one second. I'm gonna go take a look at this uh, plane going by. So stand by while we take a look at this.
All right, hey, sorry to abandon you there for a minute. We had a plane passing real close, so we're at 20,000 feet. I've got Flight Radar 24 that I use. It says that flight, which is a commercial flight from Providence to Chicago, was at 38,000 feet. So it's still, it was a good distance away from our balloon, about uh, uh, 18,000 feet difference there. But it almost went directly over the top of our balloon. So we may get a really good shot of that plane going by, which would be pretty awesome. So did have a, a very close flyby from the plane. And by, by very close, I mean, eight, you know, 18,000 feet difference. Uh, you know, our, our balloon was at uh, 20,000. That flight was at 38,000. So uh, let's see, Randy, balloon launch Saturday, 12 noon, mountain time near Snowville, Utah. Oh, awesome. Land, Cache Valley. Awesome, that's good to hear. We'll, uh, this sat Saturday meeting, today Saturday, we'll watch. If it's today, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll watch that, so. So yeah, hoping for a good video of that plane going by. That'd be really awesome. Um, let's see. All right, well, I think uh, we're, we're gonna have to start packing up here because we do have to get get on the road for recovery if we're gonna be there when it lands. So so I'm gonna end this broadcast here now. Uh, appreciate everybody that watched. Uh, sorry for the long delay. Uh, we're sitting at... Link to the map. Uh, yep, right there, overlookhorizon.com slash map. Um, so we are, uh, we're tracking well. We're a little over 20,000 feet. Just had a close fly flyby of a plane hour delay because of the hole in the first balloon but we're good now we're up and running we're going to calculate some ascent rates we'll be uh, another live two more live broadcasts later we'll also have photos status updates we're going to go calculate what the actual ascent rate is and do another prediction see where it's going to land but right now we got a lot of stuff here so we got to pick up and and hit the road so appreciate everybody for for watching sticking through it uh, even though we did have that that flight delay, which uh, yeah, that's uh, super unfortunate on that flight delay. I don't like don't like uh, delaying it. I really want to get one of these launches to just end on time. Wouldn't that just be awesome? Uh, or not end on time, launch on time. So, anyways, uh, again, thanks everybody. Uh, follow along overlookhorizon.com/map. Watch the Facebook page. We'll be posting updates throughout, uh, and appreciate it.